Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Widget Ridge. Widget Ridge is brought to you by Furious Tree Games. It's for one to two players, ages 12 and up, and games range anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes. The citizens of Widget Ridge love a good festival, and every year they put on the largest science fair of the land, known as the Festival of Three. Students and graduates come from all over to display their wondrous devices. Now, in the Faraday Square, where Lord Covington's statue, the first mayor of Widget Ridge, stands, someone has activated the statue, and it is on the rampage, trying to consume as much coal as possible, putting everyone in danger. It is up to you to overload this robot and shut it down by acquiring 100 spark points before your opponents do. So yes, this game is all about spark. You want to acquire as much spark as possible to shut down Lord Covington. But along the way, you're gonna be acquiring cards from the marketplace, spending gold to do so, creating complex machines known as constructs and activating them, again, to do various things throughout the game. But really, again, you're trying to get as much spark as possible. Now, setup in this game is very straightforward, and if you're a fan of Hero Realms or Star Realms, this is going to be very familiar. You have your Marketplace deck. You're going to deal out six cards. These cards will be available for purchase throughout the game, adding to your overall deck. Alongside of the Marketplace deck is a place where you'll put your melted cards. Melted cards is a way to remove cards from the game or thin out your deck so you can get through your cards maybe quicker or perhaps melting down cards from the marketplace to prevent your opponents from acquiring them. Now, each player receives a spark tracker. Again, you're looking for 100 spark points, so you have to have a way to track it. And then you receive a starting deck of 10 cards. These 10 cards represent gadgets and widgets. They do various things here, but really, the starting cards are all about giving you gold to buy more cards or spark to add to your spark meter. And some of the cards do both. Now you're going to want to lay out cards in your play area a certain way. You have your main deck, you have your discard pile, the area that you'll be playing cards into. You have your spark meter, but you also need an area for your workshop. This is going to be where you're going to be creating all kinds of crazy and inventive devices known as constructs. All right, so here are the basics of a turn. You know, you usually will have five cards to spend. And what you're gonna do is play these cards out in front of you. And the first three cards that we look at here are still part of our basic starting deck. But these are gonna give us three spark and three gold. And now we're gonna play two cards that we've acquired from previous rounds. The first one is an augment. This one has a play icon, you'll notice. And as soon as you play it down in front of you, you get to do that ability. In this case, we're gaining two gold or we're gaining two spark. I think we're going after gold because we need to get some more cards. And then we have an accessory. We're going to also play this down in front of us. It also has a play icon, but in this case, it's going to give us two gold and two spark, which is pretty slick. So this gives us a total of seven coins to spend out in the marketplace, as well as five spark to add to our spark tracker. So we have seven gold and we're going shopping. There's a really nice card out here known as the Butter Gun. This card is a device card. It is gonna be part of your larger construct. And when we talk about constructs, they are going in your workshop. Now, there's another type of icon here we haven't talked about. There's a little plug icon known as a connection icon. So when you make that connection around this card, this ability will activate. So after purchasing this new card, it's gonna go directly to your discard pile. And then you'll flip over a new card from the marketplace into the market row. All right, so also when you're playing cards, you can take a look at what you might be able to do within your workshop. In our current workshop, in this example, we have an augment and a device already present. However, the cards we just played, we have an accessory and really that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna grab our accessory and combine it, it does attach to the moisture extractor by via the beaker symbol. Now, you only have to connect one of these types of icons along the card. As long as you have one connection, you're good to go. So when we attached this new accessory, it now triggers the ability of the moisture extractor, which means any player with more spark than you loses five spark. 
Now it's important to note that a construct has to be created in a certain way. You have to have one augment, one device, and one accessory. To, and you can only have one of each of those. You can't do more than that. And you have to have that combination in order for this construct to work properly. So this one that we just created is a battery powered moisture extractor with gold plating. And what's cool here is after you create this, after your turn is ended with your different cards that you've just played, then you get to move to the phase where you can activate this construct. This construct in particular says I have to pay two gold and then if I do destroy a card in a workshop. That means I can destroy one of the cards in my opponent's workshop, not melting it. Melting it is different. Destroying it is just moving it to their discard pile. Or I can melt this card and gain 10 spark. Super powerful, some interesting choices to be made here. Again, if you melt this card, it is out of the game. Couple other notes on these constructs that you're creating in your workshop. On your turn when you're playing cards, if you decide that you want to swap in and out pieces of this particular construct, you can do so. And it may actually trigger more card effects. So play continues this way, back and forth. You're gonna be spending money to acquire new cards, getting more spark, using your construct, maybe get more spark, or perhaps do damage to your opponent. But ultimately, you're looking to be the first player to reach 100 spark points. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, we're heading into the final week of this campaign and they're already funded. So this game is really on the cusp of being made. And I love deck builders and it definitely has that hero realm, star realms feel to it. And I love the building out of the machines and swapping out and the different namings that can happen. It makes it a lot of fun. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.